Hey okay, what's up everyone, this is a short guide on the timeline mechanics and how it's affected by agility, speed and slows. So units don't really take turns in order, they're instead placed on a timeline. Uh, it ranges from minus 100 to plus 100 and then continually ticks up until one, re uh, one unit reaches uh, this 100 slot and then it takes their turn. You can kind of think about it like a giant clock that never stops ticking and is equally ticking up for every um, for every unit on the field. You can, however, affect their placement on this clock. So you can place them further back or farther forward, but you can never alter the speed at which they're ticking up once they're placed on the timeline. My War Monk has reached 100 here, so it's his turn and he's ready to act. The next one on the timeline would be my Guardian here. He has uh, a value of 95, and the reason he's second on it is because there's no other unit that has a higher value uh, between 100 and 95. So he has the second highest in the field, which means he has a second in order. You can always check the order on the side here. It's, um, it's ordered by time and values, and who will take the turn next? Uh, you can see my units taking out, uh, their turn, then the enemy units go, and then my units go again. Uh, of course, this is a temporary thing, like a changing thing. Um, my monk can just hit someone with a mole and slow them down by minus 37. So this bounty hunter has 67 currently. Once I hit him, uh, I slow him down, and he has a timeline of 35. You have to take into account that um, the clock, or like the timeline, ticked up by 5 uh, when I ended the turn from the monk to the Guardian, and also there is some diminishing return going on, which I will uh, go over afterwards. Um, in contrast to doing something when it's not their turn, you can also be really slowed down or sped up very frequently on your own turn. This is where the next value comes in. On the tooltip you can see timeline 100, and right next to it is the next 11 out of 100. So this would be my next placement what, uh, if I ended my turn here. Uh, and it can be influenced by speed ups or slows I obtain during my turn. So when I step on this mud tile here, it changes from uh, 11 to minus 14. If you uh, slow down enough for your next turn, you count as slowed uh, at minus 20, and you count as stunned at minus 70. So if I move over here, I'm now minus 31, and that's uh, less than minus 20, so I will be slowed down and everyone crits me until I take my turn again and uh, the slow status is removed. Uh, another huge thing is waiting. Uh, if you wait, you get a speed uh, increase of 25, so it would turn from th minus 31 to minus 14. And it's a very nice uh, quality of life, life feature that if you mouse over the tooltip of waiting, it shows you your timeline value you would gain when, when skipping your attack. This ties in very nicely with my playstyle, since uh, it not only shows me my timeline, but the next timeline. So you can accurately predict when your units take their turn and when the enemy takes their turn. And it helps a lot in predicting future movements and future turns and how they play out. And this is the formula and the according logarithmic function or graph that shows how much uh, output you get for um, every agility or speed you put in. Basically, there is a diminishing return. And if you put in 50 agility, you get a starting timeline of 36. And if you put in 100 agility, you get a, st a starting timeline of 55 every turn. Agility is very valuable in the sense that you get this the benefit every turn. Uh, however, the higher the number gets, the more diminishing return you get. Um, in terms of the game, 60 is a realistic cutoff, as it will be very hard to go above 125 agility in any normal or realistic game. It would technically go higher, but that's how far it goes as uh, Urtuk is concerned. It is also worth noting that this means that small speedups or small slows are more effective. So if you have an assassin that has not only high speed, but also has a lot of attacks, and every attack slows him down by a small margin, and by small I mean like 20 speed for example, um, it will be very effective, and if he does that full time, he will take his turn very frequently, and he will two turn other people as I like to call it, 
basically have two turns before they have their turn back again. 